Now, last but not least, um, we had really amazing uh, speakers. Um, uh, and I'm very happy to invite our last speaker for today. Um, I'm inviting Jonathan, Jonathan Hassel. He's the CEO and founder of the Hassel Inclusion from the UK. And um, Jonathan um, uh, works on removing barriers in digital technology, making it accessible for everyone. Now, this is a great way to end. This is exactly what we're here to talk about. So Jonathan, please, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to try and bring everything that people have heard together this afternoon. Uh, so in five minutes. So wish me luck. Uh, uh, just a little bit about me. Um, over the last 20 years, I've been trying to do that one thing, which is to bring accessibility together. People were talking about shift left, organizational accessibility, all of that sort of thing, which is how do you get good at this? Um, and uh, I started out uh, about 20 years ago at the BBC, where I was trying to get 400 uh, websites, and mobile apps uh, and digital TV uh, to be made accessible. And we came up with a, a number of ways of doing that, that I then uh, put into a British standard. So BS 8878 in 2010, where I tried to bring that together with uh, lots of colleagues in the UK to say what works what enables us to do this in a much more efficient way. Um, and uh, thankfully over the last uh, nine years, we've, I've, uh, my team have been doing this internationally all over the world. And uh, uh, we started working to take that British standard and turn it into an ISO standard. So ISO 30071 part one, which came out last May. Um, and so what I want to do is what is what is this thing and how does it help pull everything together? Um, and uh, this is the thing that I think is the kind of key thing, which is that most people who are creating those websites, those apps or the rest of it um, are on some sort of maturity journey where maybe they start off aware, they get competent at it, they get maybe compliant. Uh, with, with various different standards. Ideally, um, that gives them an advantage in the market because they've got a product now which is better. But good at accessibility works in different ways uh, for different types of organizations. Um, and this is me bringing everything together today. Um, Yuval uh, at the start mentioned ecosystems, a number of people have mentioned them. Effectively, this is what we've been looking at today. So um, Yuval and Rory kind of hit on this this as well you know if you like what do people actually need people with access needs people with disabilities who are older what do they actually need um, we need to kind of set those in place um, Irene was looking at if you like things like legislation and regulation how do these things help us support these needs um, and there are also things in there about if you like people's attitudes and commitment um, to accessibility you know how do we get people to actually do this um, uh, Ajit um, uh, just now was talking about cognitive disabilities and that's very much in the technology space. Uh, he was coming at it from uh, an operating uh, system perspective, but actually just before that we've got the devices. So we, we all know our smartphones or the rest of it, but actually um, it's as much um, things like digital vacuum cleaners which are coming along, all of the things that are coming out at, at CES at the moment, those new technologies, AR, XR, whatever it is, how, uh, how do they have accessibility put into them? Um, so the operating system is a great place that that can happen. Um, but if the operating system can't do it, then the sort of avatars um, uh, that George was talking about, immersive reader that Rory was talking about, those are the assistive technologies that sit on top. Um, then, and the one layer that I think we haven't really touched today quite so much is how do people who need these technologies know about them? How do they get trained in using those assistive technologies? That's another key point, but for another time, I think. Then we've got what Shadi was just talking about in terms of WCAG, um, and also what Thomas was talking about in terms of apps, which is if you're creating a website, an app, whatever it is, 
Um, how do we allow you to do that in a way where it works with all of those technologies underneath and everything works brilliantly? Um, but most people don't create a website, especially from scratch. They use content management systems. They use things like um, video players. So Gian was talking about that uh, at the start. The type of components that you put on your pages are massively important. And actually, Thomas was in there with components uh, with IBM Carbon um, and how to get this into design thinking. And then finally, we have, if you like, how you embed this in a way a team create a product. So the tools that they use. So we had Ty, um, Tamar and Amber talking about different ways uh, of testing things. Um, uh, the methods, uh, we had Adam talking about the way you do documents um, uh, depends on where they come from. So you need a process and tools to make this happen. Uh, Fundamentally, Samantha was talking about training uh, as well as certification. And then Thomas's IBM toolkit there was very much those processes. How do you get this the way you work? Well, for us, the way, um, uh, the way uh, you, you get this the way you work is ISO 30071 part one. So this is the thing that is the blueprint that says to an organization who doesn't understand everything that was on the previous slide, this is the way it all works. Um, and so that's a great way of organizations getting good at accessibility. It's a blueprint for getting them there. There's kind of five parts of it. Um, the first one is expand awareness, which is the, the benefits that we uh, that uh, Rory was talking about. We all know embedding strategy, which is very much about making sure it's not just about your products, but about your policies in an organization. Um, the product process, enabling uh, that product process to have this embedded all the way through it uh, with all of those tools. That's enabled process. Measure effects is something we haven't really um, uh, touched on quite so much today, but it's very much about if we do this, will it be good for, for companies? Uh, you know, if companies actually devote time and effort, spending money and time getting good at accessibility, will they benefit? Will they be measuring that? Uh, because that's the way of actually keeping this going over time. And then the final thing, um, continually evolve, making sure that the way you do accessibility this year is evolved from the way you did last year because everything changes, whether it's WCAG 3, automated tools, new devices, whatever it is. So um, what I wanted to kind of leave you with was um, we've, we've had lots of organizations who really see the idea of actually getting good as an organization. Um, they want to get the best out of all of these technologies. They want to, to get all of these benefits that are there and they want to create their, their websites and apps in the right way, but they want to also procure um, the right stuff for their staff as well. They want to know where they are and how to have a plan to get really good at this. And that's the thing I've put into the chat. I've got a couple of QR codes on the screen here as well. Um, there's a couple of things that you can do if you like, uh, if you are a, a, an organization going on this journey. So you can find your score. How well are we doing at the moment on all of these different things? Um, so as I say, there's a QR code there or there's a link. It's a free scorecard. You can put in, uh, answer a number of questions and it will tell you how well you're doing as an organization. If you love reading books and um, this has been an interesting taster, um, then you can grab a free book. Uh, as I say, if you just use that QR code or go to that address, um, then uh, that'll come down to you as well. That's hopefully brought this together um, so that people can understand how all of these different aspects of accessibility all come together to enable us to have a world that works better for anybody who has an access need, whether they have a disability or, for, or if they're like my mum, she's just getting old and she can't see as well as she used to. So this creates a better world for everyone. I'll hand back over to you, Michelle. Wow, Jonathan, thank you so much. This is the second time I've heard you. Uh, first of all, uh, an amazing summary of, I think, an amazing uh, three and a half hours. Um, uh, Jonathan is really helping us now uh, bring the, the ICT standard of accessibility to Israel. And I have no doubt we're going to uh, uh, talk more and, and do great things together. So thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. We are almost finished. One more minute, guys. One more minute before we go. Uh, I, I have six things for you. 
Number one, I'm reminding you, zero project, 10th to the 12th of February. Join us. Be there. We will send you information also with a summary of this uh, webinar and, of course, with the recording. Number two, I'm reminding you, if you are connected or you're representing 